can we talk Frank Sinatra for a second? Yeah, can we- let's do it. Because he was a hero as well to me because my father told me, he goes, if you're going to go into entertainment, and I said, I'd like to do that, Dad. I'd like to be like a comic or something or, or an entertainer. I just want to be like an entertainer. So he goes, well, look at Frank Sinatra. He was the greatest in the world. He was Italian. He was from North Jersey. And his family came from Italy. And he really reached the height of everything in entertainment. There's your there's your role model. So, I, you know, I start to kind of understand and absorb uh, Frank Sinatra, but then when I went to do him in the comedy clubs, I did him with respect, but I did him in the comedy clubs. Then they asked me to do him on Saturday Night Live, and I didn't want to do it out of respect for my father and for Frank Sinatra because they're the same age, they were a year apart, same mentality, same movements. And when they, people go, Oh, yeah, you you love Frank Sinatra uh, more than you know, I have respect, the respect and love for Frank Sinatra, but it's all about my dad. You know, man, it's about my father. What's doing, everybody? Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. I'm Alec Lace. And before I hit you with today's interview, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the link in the description so you can listen to all of the interviews I've done with so many tremendous dads, including Dana White, Deion Sanders, Tony Hawk, and so many others. Now, let's get going with today's interview. Joining me now, First Class Father, Joe Piscopo. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Alec, I love that you're doing this, man. I love that you're doing this and you're acknowledging dads. God bless you. Look at me. I never, I always, I'm in a suit and tie. We're doing a news hit or I'm doing the radio show. But I just, I just, I got my buddy helping me with the driveway, which got washed out. But, and if you can come over, Alec, I'd appreciate it because I need some help. In the you know, I know you're a tough guy, man. So we're doing the driveway. I'm getting the flowers in. People think it's easy. I like Rodney used to say, it ain't easy. I'll tell you, it's not easy. I'll tell you. They, oh. <laughs> well, yeah. listen, you, you, you're in dad mode. You're in dad gear here. So let's start it right like this. How many kids do you have? How old are they? Well, I, and you, I always say as the joke in New Jersey, I have a child at every exit. You know that, Alex. So I got, <laughs> no, I got, I have five children and the blessings of my life, man. And it's like, you know, I, you know, the marriage is not so much, but, and, and, but I'm, I, I always thank the, the mothers of the children because they bless me with the. I go like this. My people, we go like this. I make the sign of the cross. Best kids in the world. So I've got them from all the way, you know, older, you know, probably your age or so. My big son, Joey, who's just a great kid. God bless him. And then I've got 22. You know, I've got a 16 year old about to turn 17 year old. Michael just turned 19. My, my, my Stevie Ray Vaughan son who plays the guitar better than I ever could, you know. And then, and then I have a 10 year old. I know. The question is, Alec, my friend, am I done? And I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I, I love, I can have 10 kids, you know? Yeah, listen, I'm right there with you. And listen, you said there too, I don't do a marriage show specifically on that. This is just fa- focused on fatherhood here. I, I got four kids myself. I have three boys and then got the girl on the fourth try. Otherwise, we'd have five by now and be catching up to you here. But we, we got her on the fourth try, and that was the end of that show. Well, the, girl, the girls are the best. I have three daughters, and I got to tell you something else. And, and you don't understand women, really, I think, till you have daughters. And there's so much uh, the the intuitive nature of women, I find out. I know from my mother, of course, but when they walk into a room, this is what I like about my daughters. They can ascertain a room in a second. They'll see who's who, what's what. They'll get the vibe of the room. Guys, and, you know, with my, we're like, hey, what's going on? Hey, how are you? We have no idea what's going on. So <laughs> daughters, it's such a, I, I tell you, I, I, the main thrux of my life, I'm working a lot. We do, a, 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 by the grace of God, I work all the time and I enjoy it. But they said, Joe, what do you do for fun? And as a dad, you know it. And I watched the site here and I love what you're doing with it. And that's why um, I appreciate you taking the time to even chat with me, man, because that is I'm like, I always say I'm a dad savant, you know, the rest of life on stage. I feel pretty darn comfortable before a microphone. But with the dad, I'm I, I, the, there's like an instinct, you know, it's and that my main thing is, you know, safety for the kids. Are they eating right? And and oh, always just so caring about my children. So uh, this is great that you're doing it because dad, you know, I, I don't have to tell you, dad's, you know, we're, we're always like Jerry Seinfeld said it best. We're like the, you know, the, the helium balloon that is kind of almost out of helium. And we're just hanging around, hanging around in the background. Oh, <laughs> but, you know, but but a joy it is, my friend. So so uh, congratulations on the great work you're doing here. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. Now, take me back to the beginning of your fatherhood journey here. Then, about how old were you? Approximately, how old were you when you yeah. first became a dad? And how did becoming a father kind of change or shift your perspective on life? Yeah, 
I was 27, and then, um, we, you know, I was with uh, Joey's mom for a while, you know, and then uh, I remember distinctly, 27, I'm in the comedy clubs, right? And and having a child and at the comedy clubs, that was such an anomaly to everybody. No one could believe it. I was the only guy with a kid, you know? It was And, and, and Larry David was there, you know, Larry couldn't even think about children, or and, and Jerry Seinfeld was around, and all these greats were around, you know, but we were all starting out back then. And then I, I, Joey was born, and I remember distinctly uh, uh, that uh, animal instinct you have when you look at your child for the first time, your first child for the first time. And you can't, there's something you can't describe unless you're there. And I remember the baby was born, it was Englewood Hospital in, in Jersey, you know. And then I remember uh, uh, Nancy, his mom was crying, and then I started to cry, and then they let me hold the baby. And I looked at Joey, I said, wow, man, it was just a, an overwhelming uh, uh, comforting feeling, but almost an animal instinct of protection for that child. And that I've never experienced it. Now, again, I'm out of the comedy clubs, and and Ed, from then on, it was such a joy. And and he was like um, with me everywhere. I used to bring him out to say good nights on Saturday Night Live, which was probably against some kind of child labor law or something, you know, because it was one o'clock in the morning. But I put my, I put Joey up. He would stay there. He, my kid would hang out with like Eddie Murphy. Because Eddie was around all the time. Stevie Wonder was right down the street in Alpine, where we used to live in Bergen County in Jersey. And then he'd go Saturday Night Live. He saw all the stars of Saturday Night Live. And then I would always I see him now. I see the reruns. I see Joey as a little kid. So that that was uh, the impetus there. I was about 27. Then I just, um, you know, kept having children after that, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Incredible, Joey. Listen, what would you consider to be the um, the top values that you had always wanted to instill in all your kids? It gives you a purpose of life. And and that's the, having child gives you a purpose of life. And that's what I want to teach my kids, how grateful we should be just to be here. You know, uh, I'm not to drive it home, but I'm a religious guy. So I just say, you know, uh, you know, just you have to be uh, uh, thankful to God for being here and just appreciate that. And that's why in, even in politics where we're doing a lot of politics now, I, I don't care who you vote for. I don't care who you are. I always tell my kids this because they get political and then they're told in school what things are. And so I got to even everything out, you know, with my children just to be grateful here and to be respectful. So it's mostly gratitude, humility and respect. That's what I live by. Uh, and I just hope I, I listen by the grace of God only the, the kids are following that credo, Alec. Yeah, very well said. Yeah, I'm, I'm a faith based guy myself. My favorite part of the day is six o'clock. We eat dinner to six of us religiously. We wow. pray together and wow. uh, it's the best time of my day. So uh, I'm with you there. And, and listen, as far as the politics, I try to bring guys on from the left, from the right. And it's <laughs> just it, fatherhood is something that unites us. all. I think we can find some unity in fatherhood because we are all connected through that. We all share a similar experience, no matter what side of the street we're coming from. So uh, that's why I keep the focus on fatherhood and family life here. And ha- yeah. how about it? How about as far as discipline? goes here joe what what kind of disciplinarian have you been as a dad and is that different than the discipline style you grew up with it's a great a great question i'm the i'm the worst disciplinarian <laughs> i just don't i just i will talk i don't yell i know everything my father was uh, to this day still my hero and behind me i have pictures of my my grandfather and you know my pop and uh, they came over from Italy. My, my father was born here, but he was, he, I don't know how, the amazing, what's amazing, first of all, my father was, he couldn't speak English when he went to school. They made fun of him, but he went on to skip grades. He became a lawyer to represent the non-English speaking blue collars that that uh, my grandfather was, that his father was. Uh, he was my hero, my father. He told me how great America is. He told me how, how you got to work. And he never pressured me out. I mean, I go, you got, he's a, he was a lawyer. And he'd go to law school. I'm the least thing from an academic in the world. I can't imagine going to law school. I barely got out of college, man. <laughs> No, and and Pop was there. He is he is my number one hero. He's my number one hero. And that was that's my uh, my my driving uh, force right there. But discipline, he was. And I know I don't know. You're younger. You're a lot younger than I am, man. But in my day, they they could drive. And there was a comedian that used to do this bit. And I wish I could remember his name because I always give credit where it's due. But your dad. He could reach back and smack you in the backseat of a car quicker than anybody else. He was quicker than Muhammad Ali. My father would be driving everything good. We'd be causing trouble back and say, ah, boom, me, he, he, you would get smacked <laughs> in a second. How could he be that quick? I said, wow. I didn't even get mad. I said, or, or hurt or cry. I said, that was the fastest move I've ever seen in my life. And they knew where you were in the backseat, too, Pop would. And, and he was, 
he was, you know, and he would just be, be very, if something was wrong, he would let you know, I'm the direct opposite. I, 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 I'm just a pussycat like that, you know? And then the moms always go, oh, you should say something. You should do something. I talk, you know, I like to lead by example. And I like to lead. This sounds really, you know, kind of wishy-washy, but I like to give a hug. You know, come here. Something's up. And they think you're going to yell at them. You hug them. You hug them and you say, you got this. Let's talk it out. I try. So far, it's been working. But that's my, that I'm not a, I'm not a yeller. Uh, you know, you, you're grounded. You're grounded. I, I can't. I'm not. I, I talk. I hug. And, and I just hope it works out. So far, so good, Alex. <laughs> yeah, and listen, I, my father was my father was born in 1930, and he was 50 years old when he had me. So he came from that old school as well, you know. So he he was like a no nonsense guy. And I find it. Listen, a lot of the dads that I bring on here, when I ask them the discipline question, they'll say, "Oh yeah, I got the belt, or I got the switch, or I got the the spoon, or whatever." And then they yeah. say, "Well, I don't do that with my kids." Like it, yeah. there's definitely. And I look sometimes like when I get hard discipline to my kids, I I look and like how the hell could my dad do this? Like you know what I mean? I I, I get this guilt feeling, even like when the kids are young and I. Smell them on their ass it's like i feel so guilty for doing it like i don't know how they were he, he didn't seem like he ever felt bad about doing it like you know so the, and, and i mean and i said to you before he was a stand-in singer for eddie fisher i love right. yeah obviously you know and you do the sinatra impressions you do the the sundays with sinatra i love the show that you do Thank um you. i wanted to, i wanted to ask you this here uh, yeah. what is the demographic are, are there still is there still a big audience of younger generation that's thirsting for the Sinatra type music. What what is the audience that you're seeing? What kind of feedback do you get from the younger generation? You know, you know, it's so funny. I, I, I went, you, if you're watching this, Alec called that I tried to get on my iPad, but of course I'm out in the boondocks in Jersey, so you can't get any reception. So I grabbed the iPhone. Now I'm looking over there, like the camera's there, and I hate that <laughs> over here. I see the camera. I see the. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like, you know. I'm that's like, all right. Hey, listen. Like you know, one of those comedy characters, like uh, Marty Feldman. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how are you? So there you are. Uh, you know what? It was with uh, Frank. With let's, can we talk Frank Sinatra for a second? Yeah, can we, let's do it. Because he was a hero as well to me. Because my father told me, uh, he goes, "If you're going to go into entertainment," and I said, "I'd like to do that, Dad. I'd like to be like a comic or something." And he goes, or, or an entertainer. I just wanted to be like an entertainer. So he goes, well, look at Frank Sinatra. He was the greatest in the world. He was Italian. He was from North Jersey. And his family came from Italy. And he really reached the height of everything in entertainment. There's your, there's your role model. So I, you know, I start to kind of understand and absorb uh, Frank Sinatra. But then when I went to do him in the comedy clubs, I did him with respect, but I did him in the comedy clubs. Then they asked me to do him on Saturday Night Live. And I didn't want to do it out of respect for my father and for Frank Sinatra because they're the same age. They were a year apart. Same mentality, same movements. And when they, people go, oh, yeah, you you love Frank Sinatra. Uh, more than you know, I have respect, the respect and love for Frank Sinatra. But it's all about my dad. You know, man, it's about my father. So I go out there. And when we go out and we do uh, the impression, for example, it's all out of respect. And then I finally get, had to give in because I'm a good soldier on Saturday Night Live. And they and they said, you're going to do it. And I said, only if I could write the sketch and it has to be respectful. And I wrote a letter to Frank Sinatra. This is done with respect. You're a hero of mine. You're my father's hero. Uh, and, and, and we do this with love and respect. And Mr. Sinatra was so nice to me when I got to meet him, when I got to meet Frank Sinatra, you know, and it was and the joke is and it was so true because. I met Dick Cavett, the talk show host, introduced us at a Friars Club or something. They said, hey, uh, Joe Piscopo, Frank Sinatra. And I froze, man. I, I was in such awe of the whole Sinatra. Uh, your father would appreciate that. It's just the whole uh, the, the tenor, the whole reputation of this great man and all that he stood for, Frank Sinatra. And I froze. And he said to me, he put his hand out, Frank Sinatra, and he goes, hey, Joe, baby, how are you? Like that. And it was that. <laughs> At your North Jersey Hoboken accent, Joe. Hey, Joe, baby, how are you, man? Like that. And I go, I go, hey, can I call you Frank? And he went, no. Like, <laughs> you know, he, and, and it was in front of him, like a couple thousand people where he did that. And I'll tell you what, he used to call me the vice chairman of the board. So I appreciate you listening to the show on Sunday nights on WABC Radio uh, in New York as you watch around the country, WABCRadio.com. And we celebrate three hours uh, of who we call affectionately because he's like the captain of a ship. We call Mr. Sinatra the old man, you know, but it, with respect. So we, we celebrate the old man this week. I, I don't know when you're going to play this, but we we're going to celebrate uh, 
um, Hispanic Heritage Month, you know, and, and going to play uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim with Mr. Sinatra. So it's, it's just I just fell into it, you know, but it's all about my dad, all about fatherhood. That's what it's all about. My father was a, he used to discipline us. But if I may, he was always there. We were in Bloomfield, New Jersey, Alex. And we went I went to um, Brookdale Elementary School and I was on the baseball team. And my father was working all the time in Passaic as a lawyer, representing, you know, the workers and having to be in court. Every time we had a ball game, he came with a suit and tie on and he coached the team. And I never forgot that. See that role model he had. And, and then he would sometimes take his tie off and he would just coach. And then we'd, he'd take us out for like ice cream. I remember as a little kid, I remember that. And that is an indelible mark on my fatherhood, the, the love that he showed. Discipline, not so much. I can't. I can't carry that on. But the love and the respect that that I had for Pop, he showed me. And that's what I try to show my children, man. Yeah. Awesome testimony there, Joe, too. And listen, like I said, I grew up listening to all the music. And I think it's just when, when you listen to that era of music, I grew up with the Jimmy Roselli the, and then some Bobby Darren and all these guys. And it was like you, you fast forward to today. Wait, wait, wait. wait you're not an, are you Italian? Are you Italian? No, no, I, no, no. Italy, only Italians know Jimmy Roselli. Jimmy yeah. Roselli was a guy that was apparently so great. And he, he he performed for all the, the 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 wise guys, you know. Apparently, apparently, I'm just saying this rumor has it, you know. And and but he's like so kind of an esoteric name. But I talked to him once. But apparently, it was great. But something happened between Mr. E and Mr. Sinatra. Did your dad tell you there? They kept, there was a falling out between the two of them, you know. And, yeah. And, yeah, you no, know, he yeah, he did he did talk he did talk about that. And I do know, yeah, he was he had the reputation for playing for all the all the mob type guys and all that stuff. But I mean, I, I like my, my friends when I was a kid thought I was out of my mind because I would listen to songs like your old wedding ring was new. Like, what the hell's wrong with this kid? Like, you know, so um but when you look at the top of the charts today and the music that comes out, it's just a different message. It's just it's just totally like back then everything was about love yeah. and it was it just just has a powerful good message. And today I don't think we get that as much. Did, now did you did you pass on this tradition of the Frank Sinatra that type of music to your kids? Are they into it? Do they listen? Yeah, and you're right. And to, to your reference on the demo, it's interesting on on WABC on on Sunday nights with Sinatra, there are young. Kid, there are parents living, uh, uh, um, uh, listening with their kids. So I have a 15 year old kids will call me on the phone and they'll say, I'm listening with my dad. And, and we learn. And it's almost like a professor. They call me, you know, Professor Piscopo because I'm like a curator <laughs> of everything Sinatra, you know, with permission from the family, by the way. I have immense respect for uh, uh, Sinatra Enterprises. My friend Charlie uh, Pignon and, and Tina Sinatra who came on the show. I was just so, so, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 grateful for that. And Nancy Jr. as well. But, you know, they listen and because they want to dress up. They want to get in because the old man, Mr. Sinatra, he always had some kind of classy thing going on. I feel funny talking to you like this because that's why I always make it a credo wearing a tie. Joe, you're always dressed in a tie. You go, you know what? It's like, what would Frank Sinatra do? You know what I mean? And and everybody your age, younger, they dig it. And I, my kids and Joey would go around singing New York, New York at four years old. It was, you know, he would be singing New York. No, it was great to see. And my kids now, you know, my son, Michael, is is great. As you see Michael online, you'll see Mikey Piscopo. And he's ripping it up, playing the guitar like Stevie Ray, you know, uh, the great Stevie Ray Vaughan. But he understands that I, there's a lot I could teach my kids from what Frank Sinatra went through. For me, there was prejudice toward Italian-Americans. There is now, but even more so back then. And even Frank Sinatra's parents, like my grandparents, what they had to go through, you can't even imagine the prejudice. And you deal with it, you work, it makes you work harder. And everything that Frank Sinatra did, and that parallels my father, by the way, same generation, the greatest generation. You know, I think your father was like that as well, from what you're telling me. And it was, and I tell you what, it's it, that the whole Sinatra feel, it just transcends all ages. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. And he's, yeah, the, only, I, he's the guy. He's the guy. It's, it's, he it, is old blue eyes. And I, I love the fact that you, that's why I love your show. You, you're, you're introducing him to a whole new generation of people out there. So I love the fact that you have it going. And I love how you give like the behind the scenes things that we never heard before. Right. 
to the moon. Let me swing among the stars. That's the best album, I think. I think, Alec, A Man and His Music, a great album. Look, it's really sad that I could bring that up last minute like that, isn't it? I can't yeah, listen, but like I said, I love how you play some of this stuff we never got to hear. Like, I know last week I was listening and you had, he was uh, he sang the same song three times in a row because he was a perfectionist. He wanted to get it right and he, and he kept uh, you know, missing a note or whatever it was. And I love getting the chance to hear it. Then there was some commotion towards the end of the third take and it was like, so those are the things that I appreciate getting the chance to hear on the program. What's next for you here, Joe? What kind of plans or goals you have for yourself for the future? You know what we did? We're going to stay with the Frank Sinatra show, probably turn it into a TV show because it's working so well. Thanks for picking that up. That was Angel Eyes. And I found that with permission uh, from the uh, Sinatra family, of course. And it was the old man trying to get Angel Eyes down, you know. <laughs> Drink up all you people. Yep. What a thing you see. He goes, did I get the note? Did I get the note? We got it. Ah. Thanks for picking that up. That means the world to me. Someone at, in your age group, Alec, if I may, you know, understanding that was so we're we're going to probably turn that into a TV show. We're on the road all the time. You can go to JoePiscopo.us or JoePiscopo.org and you'll see where we are. We'd love to see you. I'm playing down at the ocean, Atlantic City to uh, in, in we're at uh, uh, Lorenzo's in on Staten Island. I love playing clubs. We're doing theaters, the Suffolk Theater. We're out in November in Long Island. And we just got back from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, because I only play the hot spots, my friend. So I said, <laughs> that they, go, they go, you want to go to the Oshkosh Jazz Festival with Joey DeFrancesco? Joey's like a jazz legend. And my friends Dave Damiani and Haley Reinhardt, Eugene Landau, Murphy, Sal Balantinetti, and these cats that won all those shows, you know, on TV. And we go out and we perform around the country live with the big band, Al, with the big band. So I'm out there. I'm working uh, New York. I, it's nonstop. And I ain't going to stop, man. I'm going to keep going. That's uh, just the way Frank Sinatra did, the way my father did right to the end, you know. So I appreciate it. Hey, now I got to tell you, if I may, tell me. Now, you probably told your audience, but you when I when we came on the air, before we went on the air, I said to Alec, I said, oh, my, I'm, I'm exhausted now. I said, you got me down. I'm just working outside, but I've been on the radio. You got to get up like 3, 4 in the morning to do morning radio on AM 970. We do radio. But you, you beat me right to the punch, man. You, what time are your hours on the railroad, my friend? Yeah, I work seven at night till three in the morning. So I oh. have a unique a unique schedule there that kind of lines up. God so, uh, but, it, but it works for me. It works for the family. So uh, like I said, I'm going to drop the link that you just mentioned there in the description of this podcast episode so Thanks. my listeners can get over there, find out more about you, what you're doing, and the show. Last Thanks. thing I want to hit you with here, Joe, I love to ask all the, the guests that I get on the podcast, yeah. What type of advice do you have for that new dad or for that about to be father who's out there listening? Yeah, you got to always make I, I, I know it's going to sound like it spoils the child. Make the child the priority, the child the priority, because, I mean, we could talk and I, I know we I, but guy to guy. It's like and I'm a single guy now, you know, and I, my, my personal life. It's a running joke on the radio. You know, it just it's like a. I talk about trains. It's like a train wreck. My, my you know, the relationship. But I never bring around somebody. And it took me years to learn that. Don't bring around somebody where the kids, where they feel uncomfortable. You know, think, make the child a priority. Because people always say, uh, oh, oh, someone will say, hey, let's meet in New York. And then I think, well, there's a school play and there's no contest. Drop everything. Go there. Go to the play. You're going to sit there at the play. You're going to go, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm here. i got to sit, sit through it. Bring flowers for your daughter after the play. Go to the ball game. Be locked in. Last night, where was I? It's I got to go to bed early. I'm watching my son at Crossroads in Garwood, New Jersey, ripping it up with his band. And I'm sitting there watching him going, yeah, man. After the show, then we said, thanks for coming, Dad. And and that was, that's it. Just be there. That's the kid. If you're going to have the responsibility of having a baby, having a child, then that has to be the priority. That would be my humble advice. Yeah, wow. I, I love the message. This has been an honor for me. I got to say, Joe Piscopo, you're a first-class father all the way. Thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. Alec, God bless you for what you're doing, my brother.